Welcome geometry students to section 6.2 properties of parallelograms. Today we're going to be talking about what is a parallelogram and some of the important properties we can uh, determine from knowing that they're a parallelogram. Let's go ahead and, and get started with the definition. So the definition of a parallelogram. As the name suggests, it's a quadrilateral. Well, the name doesn't suggest it's a quadrilateral, but it is a quadrilateral. And this is the part that's uh, intuitive, where, or oh, we should say with, with opposite sides uh, that are parallel. And there's probably a more elegant way you can <laughs> you can write that, but uh, that's pretty good, right? It's just something that you can understand. Opposite sides are parallel. So if you look here we can see that these two sides are parallel because they have the little carrot thing. These have two carrots each, so those two sides are parallel. Okay. Now, it so happens that because the opposite sides are parallel that there's another property um, that goes along with it. So opposite sides are parallel, and also the opposite angles are going to be congruent. So uh, let's go ahead and show that here. So we have opposite sides, so we can say that BC is parallel to AD. Okay, those are opposite sides. Okay, they're across from each other. Then we got, let's change it to red. We have BA parallel to, uh, and we can say CD. It doesn't really matter the, the order. We could call it DC if we wanted to. So those two uh, sides are parallel. So opposite sides are parallel. Now, the other part of this that uh, is inferred from the opposite sides being parallel are that opposite angles are congruent. So we can say that angle A and angle C are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C. Now what makes these opposite? Because they don't share a side. You can see that A here shares a side with angle B right there. So that's not opposite. And same thing with D, it shares a side with D. So that's not opposite. Opposites all the way across the parallelogram. Now, when we're talking about D, angle D, the opposite angle to angle D is angle B. So then we say that angle B is congruent to angle D. So we got the first part done. That's one of the important uh, features of a parallelogram. And now we're going to kind of expand off that with some additional theorems. First one. Parallelogram congruent sides theorem. This is congruent, okay, so just wanted to shorthand it. Congruent sides theorem. If, and this is an easier way to write this, a, I'm going to show you in just a second. If ABCD is a parallelogram, how do I know this is a parallelogram based on the diagram? Well, that's a grams going around here. The diagram shows it's a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. That's all you need to know to know it's a parallelogram, okay? So ABCD is a parallelogram. Often you will see it abbreviated, and this is what I was alluding to earlier. You'll see it written like that. That was kind of a bad example. Let me try a little bit better. <laughs> Not going much better. Okay, so then we have something like this. So you'll see something like this often written in your textbooks. Um, it's going to look a little bit better than that, but that just means it's a parallelogram. Okay, so if we know it's a parallelogram, then we know that uh, not only are opposite sides parallel, but opposite sides are congruent as well. So we can relabel this A, B, C, D, and we know that opposite sides are going to be congruent as well. And we can, let's write that, opposite sides congruent. And I'm going to change the color just so it's, it adds a little bit more pop to it. So we'll change this one to like a blue. Okay. So ABCD is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. That's an important feature. So not only are they parallel, they're also congruent. Okay, now we already knew that opposite angles are congruent. What about consecutive angles? Well, first off, what is a consecutive angle? Well, let's define this first. If ABCD is what? A parallelogram. If it's a parallelogram, then what? What can we say? Well, cons opposite angles we said are these ones. Consecutive one angles are ones that are right after each other, okay? If we're talking about consecutive days, we're talking about days one after the other, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, okay? 
Now we're talking about consecutive angles. We're talking about angle A and angle B, for example, or angle A and angle D. Okay, those are both consecutive angles, one after the other. Then consecutive angles are, what do you think? Supplementary. That means they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so we know that these are parallel lines. So technically the reason why that works is because this is a transversal cutting through these parallel lines. So these would be same side interior angles, okay, consecutive angles. Therefore, they are supplementary. Same side interior, supplementary, consecutive angles, and a parallelogram, also supplementary. And I changed it to orange and I'm okay with it. Now, parallelogram opposite angles theorem. Okay, uh, we kind of alluded to it earlier, but um, we're gonna go ahead and spell it out again. So if we know that, what color did I use? I've been using purple? No, blue, okay. If the ABCD is a parallelogram, ABCD is a parallelogram. See, that's nicer than writing parallelogram. Then we know that opposite angles are congruent. So we can say, oh, where's the then? No then, let me write it. Then, dot, 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 and we'll use green this time. Opposite angles congruent. Okay, so that means A is gonna be congruent to C, and then B is congruent to D. We already talked about that, so we're just gonna go, go ahead and kind of skip over. Parallelogram diagonals theorem, okay? Uh, one of the last ones we have here. If a, and we're not, let's call it something else. Let's call it C, D, A, B. How about that? Is a parallelogram, and we know it based on the givens here. Then, what can we say? We can say the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, it doesn't mean the diagonals are the same length, it just means they bisect each other. So these two segments would be congruent here, and these two segments would be congruent there, okay? So this is like our midpoint of both of the diagonals, okay? So the diagonals bisect each other. This is kind of, uh, not a rarely used, but it's, it's gonna be like one question on your test. That's generally how it happens. Parallelogram congruent segment theorem. If AB is parallel to CD is parallel to EF. So we have three sets of parallel lines here, not just two, okay? And this is just an extension of parallelograms, parallel sides, et cetera. So we have three sets of parallel uh, lines. Then we can say what? Well, the other thing that we were given is that AC is congruent to CE, okay? So if those two little bits are congruent, then what's gonna happen is, let's get this different color, let's call this blue color. Then we're also gonna have BD is gonna be congruent to DF. Okay, the best way to kind of um, think about this is thinking about roads. So if you have two roads, okay, and they're not parallel, but they cut through like three parallel roads like this, then the distance you travel on this road Okay, and this road between the two intersections is gonna be the same, dis well, that's not gonna be the same distance, but traveling on this road will also be equidistance between that intersection. Okay, so kind of a weird way to think about it. It's not often used, but it's something just to, to keep in mind. It is a theorem, keep it in mind for your future test problems. I'll just let you look at it one more time. Okay, you looked at it. Pause it if you want. Parallelogram opposite and parallel sides theorem. Okay, these are getting more and more kind of not obscure, but yeah, obscure. So if uh, we didn't label this one A, B, C, D, but I'm going to call it B, C, D, A. How about that? Is a parallelogram. If we know that, then we can say what? We can say, should I go back to. I'm going to go dark blue. Then opposite sides are parallel and congruent, okay? So you can see here that opposite sides, so in this case, BC and AD are opposite, so opposite sides are always gonna be parallel and congruent to each other, okay? 
Uh, this one's kind of good in reverse. We're going to get to some of the inverse, the converse theorems uh, in the next section. So that's one to keep in mind uh, for that. Let's go to example one. What must X and Y be so that ABCD is a parallelogram? Okay. Well, we know lots of different properties. We know that uh, opposite sides are parallel, so we have opposite sides. We know that uh, consecutive angles are supplementary. We have lots of properties that we can reference above. The most obvious choice to use would probably be the opposite angles being congruent. So we know that these two angles are congruent, and we know that these two angles are congruent. What does that mean? Well, that means we can make two equations here. We can say that 3x is equal to 4x minus 21. And we can say that y plus 78 is equal to 3y. Now, you could also do one saying something like this. You could say 3x plus 3y equals 180 because uh, consecutive angles are supplementary. But that one would be a little tricky because you have x and y in the same equation. So you'd need two equations and do a system of equation and blah, 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 blah. It takes a little bit long to do that. So in this case, it'd be easier just to uh, set the opposite angles equal to each other. What we're going to do here is we are going to subtract 4x from both sides, trying to get the x by itself first. Always combine the x's if they're on both sides. We get negative 1x equals negative 21. We divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and we get x equals positive 21. It's asking us what must x and y be, so we don't have to plug it in to figure out the angle, but we could do that if we wanted. We could just plug in uh, 21 for x and then multiply by 3 to find that angle, if we were interested in doing that, but we don't need to. Let's not make it complicated for ourselves. Here in the y equation, we're going to subtract y from both sides, combine the y's because they're on both sides. So we have two, 78 equals 2y. And then we're just going to divide by 2 to isolate the y, and we get 39 equals y. I'm pretty sure it's 39. Yes, it is. So we have our value. Not sure why the keyboard popped up. We have our value for y. We have our value for x, and we are good to go. Example 2 is a little bit tougher. Here we have ABCD as a parallelogram. Find the missing angles. Now, this one's a little tricky because it gives you this and um, this kind of split right here. So students often will be like, okay, why is that split? What does that mean? Okay, just calm down. Let's treat this like a parallelogram. That would mean that this whole angle right here is going to be equal to this whole angle here. Okay, nothing's new. And then this whole angle here, 3, is going to be congruent to 4. So let's treat it as such. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to do some addition, 49 plus 23. That angle is equal to 49 plus 23. So if my math is correct, it's 72 degrees. Let me just double check that. Wouldn't want to make us take live on TV. So we have, that is 72. Okay. So that means that's 72 degrees. So, um, oh, so that's big angle 72. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, well, what does that make one and two? Well, we're, we're going get to get to that in just a second, okay? But we know uh, a few things that will make it a little bit easier for us. But let's just take it one step at a time. We know that's 72 degrees, okay? Um, now, one thing I want to do here is it doesn't help us because we still need to know one and two. So I'm going to demonstrate something real quick. If we draw these lines and extend them and extend this transversal through, Okay, now we have these angles here. If you remember from, what is this, chapter 3? Those are alternate interior angles. So that means angle 1 is also going to be 49. Then we have angle 2 is going to be equal to 23 because those are alternate interior angles also. Oh, no, that's actually wrong. Those aren't, uh, that wouldn't be alternate interior angles for those ones. Okay. I have to redraw this. Give me a second. Okay, that's a common mistake, actually. So I have to redraw this because that transversal wasn't cutting it perfectly. So then we look at this. There we go. Now see how 23 is the angle that's touching both the... Before it wasn't, okay? Um, so in this case, now we can say, based on those parallel lines, those are opposite our alternate interior, so that's going to be angle 2 is going to be equal to 23 degrees, okay? Now, that was like the first part. Now we have to do the second part, which is find the blue angles. Um, the blue angles here, 
are going to be supplementary to its consecutive angle. So that means 72 plus our blue angle, 3, is going to be equal to 180. So we just subtract 72 from 180, and we are going to find out what angle 3 is. So angle 3 equals 108. And if angle 3 equals 108, that means angle 4 also needs to equal 108 because they are opposite. And opposite angles are congruent in parallelograms. And that's all we have for section 2. Hope to see you next time when we do section 3 more on proving stuff with parallelograms. Can't wait to see you then.